Okay, so we've only talked so far about the simplest case of interference. Remember, when does interference happen? Interference happens if you have two separate beams of light that are coming together. Interference happens when you have two separate beams of light that are coming together, because then the two separate beams of light could either constructively or destructively interfere. All right, well, actually, I lied a little bit. Interference happens when you have two or more beams of light coming together. Uh, if you have, uh, so if you have three or four beams of light coming together, they could all constructively or destructively interfere as well. All right, so another very important example, we just did two slits, but you could have many slits. So this is supposed to be a diagram of many slits. Uh, there's many, many slits here. There could be hundreds of slits. This is sometimes called a diffraction grating. A grating is something with a bunch of very close slits. So here's our diffraction grating. And obviously, again, we're going to start with light. All the light is in phase when it starts. And um, different beams will go through different slits. So that will split up into a whole bunch of hundreds of different beams. And then all those hundreds of different beams are going to travel different distances to the same point. And then whether this is a dark or a bright spot is going to depend on whether we're getting constructive or destructive interference. So why do they, they all go to the same point? Because they all have oh, I, I'm sorry. I should have said um, that there, all, of the, all of these light, beams of light are going to spread out and go to everything on the screen. Okay. I'm just focusing on one point. I'm just saying, well, what will happen at this one point? Well, th the point I'm trying to make is each point on the screen will re receive a beam of light from every single slit. Each point on the screen will receive a beam of light from every single slit, and therefore each point in the screen can be experiencing constructive or destructive interference. So this point will also receive all, uh, uh, many beams of light that will look like this. And we'd have to figure out here whether the beams were interfering constructively or, or destructively. Okay. And again, it's going to be any time two of the beams have a path length difference that's a whole number of wavelengths, those two would interfere constructively. Uh, and uh, any time there's a whole number of wavelengths plus one half wavelength difference, they would be destructive. All right, so it, work, it turns out you can work out the math then to figure out where the, uh, the bright spots and the dark spots would be. And I believe it's the same formula as we already had for the two slits. Okay, I got one of those right and one of those wrong. The equation for the bright spots is the same. There's a different equation for the dark spots. questions about the dark spots. So we'll just focus on the bright spots here. So again, m could be 0 or any other integer here. All right, so here we have the same equation. So we're not going to go through the mathematical proof of why this formula works here. We're just going to take this formula on faith. But it's related to the idea, again, that things are re uh, constructively interfering and using a bright spot when the path length difference between all the different rays is m times, uh, is, uh, m times length.
So again here, there will be a central bright spot, and then there will be other bright spots spread out above and below. It still helps to draw the center line. What does theta stand for again? Label the theta. It's easier for me to erase than you. Yeah. So again, so is there one theta or many thetas? Every spot has a different theta, remember. Every spot will have a different theta. Now the tricky part here is D. Remember, what did D stand for when there was two slits? The distance. the distance between the two slits. Any guesses, what does D stand for here? Distance from where the slits begin and slits end. It's not a bad guess. It turns out, though, that D is the distance between adjacent slits. No. D, so it's still the same as before, really. Same thing. Yeah, it, when we had two slits, D was the distance between the two slits. When we had two slits, D was the distance between the two slits. Well, D is still the distance between two adjacent slits. So D would be a very tiny distance here, right? So distance I can't even draw it. D is this tiny distance here between any pair of slits. Normally, you're going to have all the slits at the same distance from each other. To get a nice pattern, you're going to have, um, so you have, a, have uh, this machine tool, or whatever you call it, so that uh, you get the exact same spacing between all the slits. So D would be the distance between adjacent slits. It's still a good idea to draw the center line, because we know if we're focusing on a particular spot, theta is still this. And we were just saying that what is D? D is this tiny distance between adjacent slits. Uh, so actually, I'm still not trying to find right. D is not supposed to be the, the width of the slit. It's supposed to be kind of the, uh, the distance between the slits. Oh, it's good enough. D is this kind of distance. That's good enough for us. OK. Now, let's say that we have 800 slits per centimeter in our grating. Our challenge is to figure out D from that. So take a second. Can you see, how can we figure out the distance between adjacent slits if there's 800 slits per centimeter? So it's divide the point oh one meters by eight hundred. Well, you figured it out. Good. Let's draw a picture of that. So let's say let me draw um, one. So here's the uh, the grading. Now, let's take this portion, and let's say that this portion is one centimeter long. Of course, if it's 800 slits per centimeter, that doesn't mean it's only one centimeter long. It could be 10 centimeters. But let's just take one centimeter of it. So how many slits are there in this region? Yeah, that's what it means to be 800 slits per centimeter. So how much of this, total, uh, how much of this one centimeter is apportioned to each pair of slits? Well, one, uh, one centimeter divided by 800. There's pretty much 800 uh, different adjoint, uh, uh, pairs of slits over here, right? There's uh, between slit 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, between 3 and 4, between 4 and 5, between 5 and 6. There's 800 uh, uh, adjoining slits next to each other. So we have to split this 100 uh, we have to split this 1 centimeter up uh, into 800 little regions. 
we split the one centimeter up into 800 little regions, and that will tell us the total distance that's, that's allotted for the distance between each pair of slits. And that's exactly what you figured out, so that's good.